Please welcome back to the program, Mr. Ken Dryden. Hello, sir. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm just fine, thanks. Yeah? Yeah. Life is good? Life is quite okay, thanks. Did you do this book to add, add to it? The 30th <laughs> anniversary of the game, that's got to be an interesting experience for a guy like you. It was, actually. Um, I had to read it, and, and I hadn't read it since I wrote it. And, uh, and that was an experience. Yeah. Um, and I needed to read it because I was writing a new last chapter to it. Right. And I, I needed to know what the feel of the rest of it was. And uh, actually, it was, it was fun to re-inhabit uh, Scotty Bowman and Guy Lafleur and, and, and the 1970s of Montreal and Quebec and all that was happening then. It was, right. it was, it was fun. You say this stuff, it reminds me of something that I heard after the fact your dad said. Watch this clip here. I would have to say that uh, one of uh, Ken's attributes is his analytical mind. He just <laughs> will not accept things. <laughs> he, uh, he wants to know why or where and uh, I tell you, uh, as far as our family is concerned, uh, we haven't won an argument since he was about age 15. I don't think I've ever seen that. Is that thing. incredible? Mm. Bad moustache. <laughs> that was a great moustache. What are you talking about? He, he, had that, he had that moustache forever. Did he? Oh, geez. So you were always that kid, though, trying to figure things out? I guess so. I mean, it's... Uh... It's fun to try to figure things out. I mean, there's, you know, there's always a reason why something is. Mm -hmm. And so, what is it? And it, may, and it may not seem to make any sense at all, but if you, if you get at it, and one of the things that took a long time to learn is that everybody makes sense to themselves. And, uh, and it's your job to figure out what their sense is, uh, not to try to assume that their sense is your sense. And you'll, you'll almost always get it wrong if you try to sort them out from inside you. If you become that other person, then all of a sudden, you know, things fall into place. And so, and that's what a goalie is, too. I mean, you know, that it's your job to kind of figure out the game. You heard those old stories at Jacques Lemaire when they said, will you come back and coach the Habs? He said, why would I do that to myself? <laughs> like, why would I? Did you have the experience well, with the Leafs? <laughs> um, no, because I like, I mean, I, I like that. I, I mean, I, I understand the experience of not wanting to be uh, in a place where everything that you do is visible and, 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 and before Scotty Bowman has a chance to tell you how bad you were last night, 50 people that you've walked by on the sidewalk, you know, have said the same thing. So it's, you know, that there are a lot of people that find it much easier to just, you know, you've got your paycheck, it's the same amount in Montreal as it would be in St. Louis. Yeah. Why not play in St. Louis? You get the attention when you play. As soon as the game is over, you disappear until the next game. Right. It's a nice life, but it's also a diminished life. I mean, that, that if, if you're going to do something, why not do it where it matters? Why not do it where it matters the most? The, the, the penalties are the worst, but the, you know, but the opportunities are by far the worst, too. I mean, yeah. There's nothing like winning in one of these environments. One of the most famous calls in sports history, but you have to listen really closely. Yes, you do. Listen right at the end. You're going to hear somebody <laughs> else's voice. Watch this. You've got 10 seconds. The countdown going on right now. Morrow, up to show. Five seconds left in the game. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Uh, a couple moments there. <laughs> yeah. So what do we... Well, well, the classic, you know, is, is that, I mean, that that our kids, you know, when they got to be old enough and to hear that, I mean, that eventually one of them said, Al Michaels came up with, do you believe in miracles? Yes. You came up with unbelievable. <laughs> How come he came up with that and you came up with what you did? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then years later, when the movie was made, yeah. of course, we had to revoice all of that because they weren't using live footage in it. So we're recreating the, the voices. I've got my script. At the end of it, it doesn't have unbelievable. And I say to them, please, I said unbelievable. <laughs> and they said, well, we cut it out. Well, you know, actually, it matters to me. Uh, and it really matters to me because there's kind of a family thing about it. It matters to me. And they said, okay, go ahead, voice it. 
and they still cut it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, that launched a career of words and writing and speech giving where they couldn't cut you out anymore. Well, yeah, somehow they do, though. <laughs> You're bound <laughs> away. Stick around. More with Ken Dryden right after this. <laughs> All right, coming up, a message to Ken from America's favorite TV dad. Ken Allen, Thick here. I haven't heard from you. You don't call, you don't write. What are you up to? Ken Allen, Thick here. I haven't heard from you. You don't call, you don't write. What are you up to? Always something exciting. Next mayor of Toronto, huh? Justin Bieber's new publicist? Could happen. <laughs> Frankly, um, we could use a new goalie in my beer league here in L.A. This guy can't stop anything. Not that I've met him personally, because uh, that would mean, you know, coming back on D or <laughs> learning how to skate backwards, things I'm not that interested in. But as you can see, I'm on my way to Sochi and uh, wondering if you are. You're doing some commentary. What are you up to? Come on, be in touch. Whatever it is, I'm sure you'll be fabulous at it. Lots of love. He, he was so good in, in Canada Reads and, and taking on the game. I mean, that's a lot of time. That's a big commitment, and he made it, and he, and he got it, and he, he was terrific. Let's go back to Sochi for a second. The last time a Hab goaltender had to star in Russia it was you. And now Carey Price is going to face that. What I, what I find really interesting about him is that he started in Montreal spectacularly, then he flattened out and maybe went down a bit for a while and then has had to find his way back. If you can survive that in Montreal, you're a pretty tough-minded person. And a pretty tough-minded person is what you need on, I hope, February the 23rd, when it is a Canada-Russia final. Ooh. That would be perfect. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine? I was saying to Henderson that he always said that the goal he scored in the game before was the prettiest goal. Mm -hmm. And I had said to him, I thought the goal he scored, the big goal, was a better goal mm -hmm. because it was a more Canadian goal because it was a bit stumbly and almost every player on the ice played a role. <laughs> like it was a dive and fall and we willed that puck in the net. Well, when that puck went in with 34 seconds to go, it was awfully pretty. <laughs> the rest of it, I didn't notice. Speaking of the Habs, <laughs> I told the Habs you were coming in. I went to visit them. On one on one, it's a breakaway. You got Ken Dryden in net. What's your move? Ooh, probably panicking. Ken Dryden now, right? Yeah, Not yeah. Ken Dryden uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't even shoot on him. I'd dump it in the corner and start, start cycling. <laughs> no. Could I score on him? Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> end up running him over somehow and getting a penalty. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I have no idea. Close my eyes and shoot. <laughs> I never got to watch him play, but I don't know. With these new Kevlar sticks, man, it might be tough with, like, no helmet and, like, <laughs> the gloves and stuff that they use. So, like, sorry, Ken. Like, if I, if I said I would score on you, it wouldn't be because you're not good. It's just probably the equipment's just not up to date. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, interesting that, that it would be PK or Subban that would say that. Yeah. And, of course, he's right. I mean, that if, that if he came in, it would be far harder for me to stop him than it would be for him to score. Right. And, and, and good for him as somebody who, is, who has a superstar's ability to also have a, a superstar's attitude. Um, I'm and, glad you uh, said that because I'm, I'm sort of tired of all the criticism of players. And PK gets it, I think, partly because of the fact that he's black, but partly because he's just an outrageous personality. Why don't we want guys like that? We want these guys, don't we? I think so. I mean, I think that all of us like to think we can do special stuff, and occasionally we can, um, but not that often. And and he can. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and what he you know what he has to learn, and he's learning it, is is just to put that a little bit under control. And I remember watching him, and it was a playoff series three or four years ago, just when he started. And it was the final game, and I can't remember, in the, in the playoffs. And by this point, the Canadians were just dead. I mean, they, they, they were not going to win. Nothing was working. And they played Subban, and he had a horrible night. Just about everything went wrong. But what was really nice to see was he tried to do stuff. 
if he didn't try to do something, it would have been a very nice, cozy, easy drift into nothingness and, and a, a definite loss. He tried, he couldn't do it, it backfired, all the rest of it. But the instinct was the right instinct at that particular moment. Big part of your story is you could just as easily have been a Boston Bruin. We're thankful you weren't, yeah. but that would have been proof as a little kid. Yeah. Well, this is, this is actually a terrific picture because this was just after we moved into our new house. Yeah. And our, our parents did the unimaginable. They paved our backyard so that all of the neighborhood ball hockey games could happen in Dryden's backyard. Nice. And it is my favorite place of childhood. And we had nets made. And, and I still have one of those nets, and my brother has the other. That's awesome. And when we had, when I had my day with the cup, finally, a couple of years ago, we had a ball hockey game in our backyard because the pavement had not been torn up. Right. And at one end was one of those original nets, and at the other end was a net from the final game of the Montreal Forum. Oh. And that was the final ball hockey game. Um, I, I'm a big fan <laughs> of this one here. Wow. Well, Oh, geez. Yeah, this is uh, my brother and I in, in goal. The United and, Church uh, Observer. Yeah, and, and what's really interesting, and my brother and I think is really funny, our sister doesn't, is that my, that's right, exactly. Here is the picture, but with my sister over here. <laughs> now, 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 the United Church Observer, we eventually got the photo, yeah. and it has the photo editor's comments on it. And what it says is that there's a little, it was in the preview, or like it was just written on it, and just said, please crop little girl. <laughs> and, and we discovered it years later, and we gave it to our sister a year ago for Christmas and had it all, all, all framed and everything. Just please crop what? little girl. <laughs> now, you know who we got that photo off? We should thank this guy uh, for the photo because this is the guy that gave us all the pictures right here. Oh, my Your brother, brother gave us yeah. those photos. Yeah. Well, he was a terrific guy. And um, uh, I mean, he's um, as good a big brother as, as you get. He was terrific. And that was the, um, um, after the first game, it was, I think it was my, my, my second game in Montreal, just as I started. And it was the first time that brothers as goalies had played against each other. Mm -hmm. And it's still the only time. The only time. Yeah. That's gotta be a really special And our dad was in the crowd. The 30th anniversary of the game, one of the greatest, if not the greatest sports we'll get it written. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys.